Highlighting history of suburban Sydney with the St Peter's Cooks River History Group. Our aim is to preserve and promote local history. We are based at St Peter's in Sydney's Inner West. The municipality of Granville included today's suburbs of Granville, South Granville, Camellia, Rose Hill, Clyde, Guildford, Marylands and parts of Harris Park. Granville became a major industrial area and was known as the Birmingham of Australia. In 1788, Governor Arthur Phillip journeyed inland by boat. He landed at the head of a navigable river, which was named Duck River. Land grants were given to European settlers. The largest landowner was Garnham Blacksell, a merchant whose grant was known as the Drainwell Estate. The forest was inhabited by timber getters, charcoal burners and trappers of the many native dogs which inhabited the area. The road connecting Parramatta to Liverpool became known as Dog Trap Road. The road was notorious for attacks by bush rangers. In the 1900s, the name was changed to Woodville Road after John Lackey's Woodville Estate. The Parramatta Hunt Club, formed in 1833, met at Lackey's Sir Morris O'Connell Inn on the Dog Trap Road known locally as Lackey's Pub. Objectives of the club were to rid the district of dingoes and provide English-style fox hunting. The Vauxhall Inn was established in 1853. The original building was replaced by Tooth and Company in 1939. A railway from Sydney, which terminated at Parramatta Junction, opened in 1855. A monument in Crescent Street Reserve commemorates this event. Land sales attracted speculators and local industries. James Bergen's 1870 woollen mill manufactured tweed, famous for its high quality. In 1874, the New South Wales government established railway yards on the eastern side of Duck River. From 1891, known as the Clyde Marshalling Yards. The Junction Brick and Pottery Company opened in 1878 beside the railway line. Their chimney stack was the tallest structure in the district at that time. In 1884, Goodlett and Smith purchased the works and manufactured bricks, tiles and later cement. Today, the site of Holroyd Gardens. In 1880, a public meeting was called to discuss renaming the suburb. Granville was chosen to honour the Secretary of Estate, Earl Granville. Granville became a municipality known as the Borough of Granville, in 1885. In the 1880s, Granville developed as an area of industrial importance. William Rich's factory produced agricultural machinery, which included the Granville Stripper. Hudson Brothers Engineering was established in 1883. The company built agricultural machinery and railway wagons. Their products were exhibited at Royal Easter shows. Robert Hudson imported ironworkers from the Clyde region in Scotland and that name was given to the area around Hudson's Works and the railway station. The new Glasgow estate was affectionately known as Little Scotland. John Marnie's slaughter yard was between Blacksell Street and Duck River. It closed in 1919 when slaughtering was prohibited in the metropolitan area. In 1887, James Brunton's six-storey steam-powered flour mill was built beside the railway line. Brunton's was acquired by George Fielder in 1960. The mill closed shortly afterwards and became the location of the Granville RSL Club. John Bennett's race course was completed in 1885. He named it Rose Hill Racing Club, using the former name for Parramatta. Rose Hill Junction Station, later renamed Clyde, became a junction station with the opening of the Carlingford Line. Camellia, originally Subiaco, was named after Silas Sheather's Camellia Grove Nursery. The Sandown branch from Camellia Junction was built to serve as the industrial area along the banks of the Parramatta and Duck Rivers. The line had three passenger stations, Sandown, Hardy's and Goodyear. The Cream of Tartar Works was a platform. In 1891, Granville was promoted as the most flourishing district in New South Wales. Hudson Brothers, which had collapsed in the 1890s Depression, was resurrected as Clive Engineering, a major employer in the area for many years. 
The company manufactured locomotives, rolling stock and agricultural equipment. It diversified into other areas, which included batteries, lawn mowers and baths. Like Hudson's, they exhibited at the Royal Easter Show. At the beginning of the 20th century, the Austral Meat Company commenced the production of chilled and frozen meat for export. This area later became a crude oil refinery. In 1905, John Cook and Company began operating the Sandown Freezing Works. Adjacent to it was the Australian Kerosene Oil and Mineral Company. Granville's industrial role was recognised when the foundation stone of a technical college was laid in 1909. It produced engineers and technicians for the Birmingham of Australia. The Department of Technical Education had conducted classes in the School of Arts since the 1880s. In 1916, John Fell bought land at Clyde to expand his Nunes Shale oil refining operations. When the Nunes mines closed, refining operations continued with purchased crude oil. Taken over by Shell in the 1920s, the refinery operated until 2013. James Hardy purchased a 10-acre site for the production of asbestos cement sheets. Wonderledge Tile Works opened in 1917. In 1920, the Australian branch of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company constructed a factory in Rose Hill. The Ford Motor Company opened on the former Sandown Meat Works site in 1925. The Australian Cream of Tartar Company, formed in 1926, established a factory at Camellia. During the 1930s Depression, Granville Council struggled to provide relief works, but managed to build swimming baths in 1935-36 on the former Bergen's Woolen Mill site. Work on the Sydney Harbour Bridge provided employment for Clyde Engineering. Industries were revived by the demands of the war effort. Borrell had established a plaster mill at Camellia in 1930. The United States Armed Forces took over the factory between 1942 and 46 as a torpedo repair base. The English Electric Company built a plant on the north side of the railway line at Clyde in 1932. This was taken over by Waddington's in 1937, a small firm building custom bodies for motor cars and small buses. A larger factory enabled the company to begin building railway rolling stock. With the advent of war, the federal government took control of the plant to manufacture wartime products. In 1946, the government bought controlling shares in the company and changed the name to Commonwealth Engineering, known as ComEng. In 1940, a Sante switchgear established a factory on Woodville Road to manufacture equipment for street lighting and electrical transmission. Granville Park was resumed in 1942 by the government for use as a United States Naval Base Hospital. After the war, the temporary hospital buildings were used by the New South Wales Housing Commission for emergency housing. Housing Commission estates were constructed in South Granville. The Delwood Shopping Centre, with ten shops and flats above, opened in 1948. It was the first planned shopping centre built by the Commission. A significant number of Ukrainians settled in the area in the late 1940s and early 1950s. St Athanasius Church, which caters for the Ukrainian Orthodox denomination, was built in 1956. Granville Municipality was amalgamated with the city of Parramatta in 1948. In the post-war period, Australian Cream of Tartar diversified its interests. The company became part of a larger group which included Wesco paints and chrome chemicals. The food technology sector of the company became part of A.B. Murray, specialising in yeast production for brewing and baking. In the 1950s, industries included cigarette manufacturer Rothmans, veterinary, chemical and pharmaceutical manufacturer Merck Sharp and Dome, furniture makers Rosenblum and Framick, and aluminium manufacturer Alcan, whose largest fabricating plant was at Granville, where a complete range of mill products were produced. Tube Makers of Australia established a production plant in 1960. 
Granville Library opened on Carlton Street in 1975. It moved to the new Granville Centre in 2020. In 1977, Granville was the scene of New South Wales' worst rail disaster. 83 people were killed and 210 injured when a train ran into the supports of an overhead bridge. A memorial garden commemorates those who died or were injured in the disaster. Today, buildings of note are the Granville Town Hall, built in 1888, the 1884 School of Arts, used as council chambers before the town hall was built and later for technical education classes. The Royal Hotel. The original hotel opened in 1884. The Granville Hotel has been on this site from the late 19th century. St Mark's Anglican Church dates back to 1882. Names of parishioners who served in the First World War are recorded in memorial windows. Hoyt's Crest Cinema opened in 1948 and closed in 1963. The Australian Blues Association, Australian descendants from the Lebanese village of Blueser, now own the building and use it as a community and function centre. Granville RSL Club. The original design was based around two saucer-shaped buildings. The office furniture store on Parramatta Road was built in 1913 for John Cahoon, bag and bottle merchant. Today the area is residential and industrial, with high-rise development near Granville Railway Station. A 20-year plan is being developed for the Camellia Rose Hill Precinct. If you enjoyed our video, subscribe to our channel. It's free. Coming soon. Liverpool one of the oldest urban settlements in Australia. And check out our website, stpeterscooksriverhistory.wordpress.com.